may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Good morning, campers. Hope everybody out there is going to have a pleasant day today. Today is Monday, the 15th. Boy, I tell you, the time flies anymore, doesn't it? It's hard to believe we're almost through April. Now, what are we looking for? Now, in the next couple of days and into next week, there's a lot going on, especially with Passover there in Jerusalem. So we've got to keep our eyes on that for sure. Now, if you haven't watched Brother Aaron, Aaron, Brother Aaron did an excellent show last night. You need to check it out there at God a Minute. Uh, I watched a little bit of it as much as I could. But it was definitely an excellent, excellent program, so definitely check it out. He did an excellent job as always. Brother Aaron is quite amazing with what he finds on there. So, let's look at some of the news that's coming out this morning. Now, there's one. Grab my attention especially with everything that's going on right now. Now, this story has been out a couple of times, okay? And they keep reverting to it, and it's what bothers me, is that this story keeps popping up. And I've talked about the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant quite a few times here. Many of us have on YouTube. And it just seems like for some reason, for some reason, it's always coming back to the news. Either Russia blaming Ukraine or Ukraine blaming Russia. Russia's doing a lot right now under the radar, including flying airplanes and flying jet fighters in Iraqi airspace to kind of block Israel from being able to get to where they need to go to strike Iran. We're still waiting to see what Israel's going to do. But I've just got a feeling the Holy Spirit tells me they're going to lay a knocking on them when they do it. I really do believe that. I don't know why. I talked to Lisa Boyce about it, and she agrees that there is literally, it all indicates that something big is going to go down. Now, we don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe God will tell me in the next couple of days, give me some kind of hint of when this is all going to go down, but I think it's going to be huge. That's why I said, watch Brother Aaron's program at God Admit last night. If you haven't watched it, he brought up some prophecies that have not been fulfilled yet, and some of them that exist in Iran. So... Definitely check that out because it might play a big role. God has used me to confirm a lot of Aaron's stuff, and Aaron confirmed a lot of my stuff in the past. So definitely keep your eye on him when he's doing a program because God's, God's using it in that manner. Now it says here, Russia's planning a false flag operation at a nuclear power plant. So here we go again. The reason I keep bringing it up because this story now, everybody kind of ignores it, but I think that this is going to come back around says, Russia forces are preparing to carry out a false flag operation in Europe's largest nuclear power plant. Now, Ukraine's uh, military has said, once again, after a drone sh uh, struck the facility and hiked fears over its fate, given its location on the front line of fighting. Now, Moscow is preparing to carry out another provocation there at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in the southern Ukraine city. Ukraine's general staff said in a statement on Sunday, this provocation would be part of a false flag operation intended to blame Ukraine. This is what uh, Ukraine's armed forces said, citing the intelligent data. And like I said, this has come up quite a few times, and it's very disturbing. We've discussed this many times, between the difference between a nuclear weapon and a nuclear power plant, but we can go over it again. When a nuclear bomb comes down and hits an area, it takes all of its momentum to, and it sucks all that radiation up in the explosion, so you don't have as a bad fallout as Depends on, basically, if the bomb hits the ground versus an airburst. 
Now, if it doesn't hit the air, uh, the ground, you've got probably 14, 15 days you can go back out. Now, let's say that they happened here in the United States and we got hit by nuclear bombs. You'd have to pull up six inches of the soil and everything else after 14 days. After You could go out after 14 days. I always tell everybody else also, there's a lot of misconceptions about a nuclear bomb. Like if you're in your house, to be in the middle of your house, it's not just that simple. Say a nuclear explosion happened in your house, you want to go to the middle of your house if it's best to go into a basement. But even if you're in a basement, you want to surround yourself with yourself with a lot of stuff. The thicker, the better. Because when the radiation comes down on top of your house or wherever you are, that radiation will sit up there on top of that roof and it will leak that radiation down through your roof. So you want to be away from the exterior walls, from the what's facing the outside. Best way to go into the middle of the house or in a basement and literally take the doors off the hinges and surround you and make yourself a fort like we did when we was kids and keep piling books, whatever you can. If you've got plants outside and planters, bring that in and pile the dirt on top of it. Seriously, this will save you from getting radiation poisoning. So I'm just bringing that up. It's a helpful tip for anybody because I don't think we'll see it. But if you're left here, that would be the best thing to do because there's going to be a nuclear war eventually. And this stuff, this nuclear talk just doesn't go away. It just keeps getting worse. It says Newsweek reached out to the Russian Defense Ministry via comment, which they're always going to say it wasn't them. And Ukraine's going to say it's not them. They both have tried to take out that power plant. Bottom line. The nuclear power plant, which is under Russians' control in southern Ukraine region, has spent more than two years on the front line shelling and drones and drone strikes uh, around the six reactor facility have raised fears over the possible nuclear accident, which has been going on now for a while. Earlier this month, Russia and Ukraine blamed one another for drone strikes on the side. They've both been hitting it. For the first time since November the 22nd, Europe's largest power plant was directly targeted in military action in the United Nations. Nuclear watchdog, the International Atomic Agency, said on April the 7th. Such reckless attacks significantly increase the risk of major nuclear accident and must cease immediately, added the chief. There's no indication of damage to crucial nuclear safety or security systems at the site. Now, Russia and the, uh, has several times tried to translate or Ukraine responsibility for the use of the unmanned uh, attacks the objects, let's see, un, let's see, unmanned to attacks the objects of the nuclear power plant in the past few weeks. That's what Kiev is saying. No one but the Russian terrorists have put the world so close to the verge of concisus radiation disaster. This is coming out of Kiev. Russian officials have blamed Ukraine for the drone strikes and shelling of the facility. The IAEA said in a separate statement on Saturday that all six reactor units at the plant were now in cold shutdown for the first time since 2022. One of the units was kept and what is known as a hot shutdown to provide district heating as well as a process steam for liquid waste treatment at the site, Grossi said. Now, cold shutdown means there's additional response margin for several days to react to the removal of heat from the unit. The reactor needs less cooling water than the state of the hot shutdown, which one more uh, difficult uh, was more difficult after the destruction of the dam that they took down last year. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier this week that Russia plans to bring at least one of the reactors plant back online. Right now, Russia is in control of that reactor. Okay, so they've they've got control over the reactor. But back to what we was talking about, bomb versus plant. Now, if that plant would go, or any plant like that, you got a Chernobyl. It's different with a nuclear power plant. Once those reactors go, you're talking thousands of years before you can go back. It destroys the land, water, everything. That's the difference between these nuclear reactors. They're very dangerous. And I do believe, eventually, somebody's going to take one of those out there in Zaporizhia. One of them is going to do a red flag. I don't know which one it is. I just don't see Russia doing it. 
because it would send tons of radiation into Russia itself, and it would be a, a disaster for Russia. So I just don't see them doing it. Could they do it? Of course. We're dealing with some evil actors around the world right now. They're taking over the planet, basically. So with all the evil that's running around, I don't put Lucifer past doing anything right now. I just don't. There's just too much going on right now, and we're in the end days. You guys know that, and I know it. Now, it says Iran issues a fresh threat to the U.S. What's new? It says Iran has warned Israel of a large warned Israel of a larger attack should it retaliate against the drone and missile assault, and that the U.S. bases would be targeted if Washington supports Israel in the military operation. Iran fired more than 300 drones in that response to the Damascus fiasco. U.S. President Joe Biden and the U.S. forces helped Israel down nearly all the drones and missiles. He said he would convene a meeting of allies on Sunday to coordinate a united diplomatic response to Iran's attack. Major General Mohammed Hassan, the chief staff of the Iranian Armed Forces, told state television that Iran's response will be much larger next time. But here's the thing. If Israel does what I think they could do, Iran ain't going to be launching anything. They're going to be back in the Stone Age. Because I think Israel has just had enough. Now, if we're going to see the verge of the Psalms 83 war, which I do think we're very close, that Israel itself will put these people back in the Stone Age. That's what I think. Now, they've got a new EMP weapon. Now, I don't know how big this thing is or how much ground it would cover. But could you imagine an EMP weapon used in today with all the technology and chips that we have? It's everybody's worst fear. Everybody's, really. I saw something similar at the end of time, and I wasn't the only one. Many others saw it, too. And I saw the planes and everything fall out of the sky, and I don't know what caused it. Was it the rapture? Was it an EMP? I don't know. But many people have seen it. So we know it's going to get used eventually. But Israel's got this new technology they're itching to use. And they could set Iran back to the Stone Age, along with its proxies. I do believe if Israel hits with a big stick, it would probably scare the proxies enough to where they would never attack Israel again. Because something's going to happen. The Bible tells us. Something's going to happen between all these proxies and all this stuff that something's going to scare the living tar out of them and they're just going to quit. Then God's going to put a hook in Russia, Turkey, and so on. And then they're going to come around for the Gog and Magog War, which are very, looks like they're starting to ramp up and start to happen almost simultaneously. So with all that, now that war is too overwhelming for Israel. They can't fight that war. That's a war they cannot fight, so God eliminates this war. It's basically to show the world he is still on the throne. It's basically to show Israel that he is God. That's what that's all about with the Gog and Magog. It's to show the world that the only true God is the God of Israel. That's it. The other ones are false. That's what that's for. U.S. President Joe Biden said the U.S. forces helped them down these missiles and drones. And uh, let's see, Bagari said that Tehran was uh, communicating with the U.S. through the Swiss embassy, which handles U.S. interest in Iran in the absence of diplomatic relations. That are uh, any backing of Israel's retaliation against Iran would result in the U.S. regional bases being targeted. Now, they've already been targeting these bases. They've already killed some soldiers of America. And we still keep giving Iran a pass. And now we have to deal with Russia trying to protect Iran. And they're going to because Iran is supplying them with weapons and drones. And this, like I said, this is becoming a world conflict. We know that Russia plays a major role in the Gog and Magog war. And you're starting to see the foundation of that being made. If the U.S. preparations for the next aggressive action by Israel through the bases, it was the Middle East region of the military facilities it had region in the region, and the information is confirmed to us, its bases in the regions would not be safe. 
Let's see, Iran's president, Horsi, said that the country has taught Israel an unforgettable lesson. Oh, no, they haven't. But, boy, they're going to get taught a lesson themselves, I'm sure. Let me tell you something. Don't underestimate the Jews, and don't ever, ever underestimate God. He is going to lay a thumping on Iran like you've never seen. Just watch and see. It says, he also warned of any new adventure against Iran with interest would be met with firm and regrettable response. It's going to be, but it's going to be a happening to them. The Bible tells us Iran's going to take a, a major loss that they don't recover from. He called the attack exercising the right of legitimate defense on Post X, former Twitter, adding that the show shows Iran's responsibility or responsible approach to the regional and international peace and security, which is garbage. He added at uh, this juncture, the Islamic Republic of Iran has no intention of continuing defensive operations. They was bombing Israel today through their proxies. These people are liars, and they torture Israel, and that's what they live to do. They're the number one state for terrorism, and they terrorize all the nations over there in the Middle East. Even Saudi Arabia come out today and said the war in Gaza was to stop Israel from having relations with the other Arab nations. Remember, it was very close to happening that this great big peace deal that was supposed to happen in uh, Israel working with Saudi Arabia and some of the nations they'd never been able to was going to go through, and Iran did not want that. So now we have some, what's the word, friction between Saudi Arabia and the other BRICS nations. This is getting interesting. It's starting to shape up as a world war, as we said it would. And it's all all connected. Saudi Arabia, all these people are all connected now. He added, at this juncture, the Islamic Republic has no intention, like I said, of doing anything. And like I said, they was doing it today. But he said countries hosting U.S. bases would have, be, uh, have been warned that if their airspace or territories are used by the U.S. to support Israel's military actions, those bases will be targeted. Now, I hate to say this, but if this happened four years ago, they would got their butts handed to them. But Biden is not going to do anything. He literally cowards under the bed if, after every threat that anybody does. That's why you're seeing what's happening today. See, God put him in there because he knew he would be weak. Because we're at the end of time. America has to go. Because Israel's going to have to be on her own. That's how all this works people. That's what the Bible teaches us. They've got to be on their own. They ain't going to learn until they're on their own. So America will be removed. And our evil government. And it is beyond evil. Is going to fall. That's why the X was marked on April the 8th. Now many people don't believe us with that. But it is coming. And when it does, it's going to be one after another. Just watch with your own eyes. Watch the weather. Watch all these different things. There's a lot coming. We emphasize that we have never welcomed an escalation of tension in the region, he said. He told the White House today that the operation was confirmed and aimed for pushing the Zionist regime. Iran and Israel have long waged a shadow war, but Saturday's attack was the first time Iran launched it distinctly straight at them and that, like I said that right there's another sign of the end days Iran has never attacked Israel directly do you see how this is working and how it's building up to the rapture of the church that's why it's important for us to discuss these things because all these things lead to the same conclusion our departure it comes as tensions in the region have reached their highest since Israel launched its war against Hamas in the Gaza Strip six months ago, following Hamas's attack on October the 7th. Let's see. Do we have anything else? No, that seems to wrap up that story. So, what do, what do we know? We do know that Israel was going to do something eventually. We just don't know what it is. Now, me and Lisa Boyce have threw, threw around different things. And I'm sure you guys will do in the comments, too. You all have your sus suspicions also. We all know something's coming because we all feel it. And we all know after April the 8th, everything's going to go crazy. And we know that everything we see from this point on is probably going to blow our minds. But we definitely don't have much longer. Now, that's just the truth. We don't 
have much longer. The wheels are turning and the ark will leave soon. We're all going to disappear. Thank God. Because I don't want to be here anymore on this evil planet. And I know you do, you guys don't either. So let's pray. Get my hat off. All right. Lord Jesus, thank you for another day, Lord. Thank you for putting a shield around the watchmen and watch women that are preaching the, the correct gospel, Lord. Your gospel. And I ask you to watch over them and their families in these days ahead. For war is coming after us too. In Jesus' name it will be done. Ask for you, Lord, to watch over the Jews in these dark days as Jacob's trouble finds its way here. Be with them, Lord, in these days ahead, in Jesus' name. Ask me to watch over the homeless, the sick, the conflicted. On this day, Lord, reach out to them and get them to the point of the rapture, in Jesus' name it will be done. Ask for you to watch over the innocents around the world as war breaks out in every angle in every country around the world. We see it growing day by day, in Jesus' name. Be with them, Lord, and get them to the rapture. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you do, for blessing us and watching over us. I pray for all the ones on here that brings their loved ones' names and their friends each and every day, that they will be saved before the rapture. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord, I pray for the ones who come against the channel and the ones who come against me on here, that you lighten their hearts in these last days so they can get on that ark. In Jesus' name, it will be done. Lord Jesus, just be with us. Thank you for the roof of our head, food on our tables. In Jesus' name, thank you for letting us be awake during these last moments that the bride will be here. And we know it's not much longer that we are on our way home. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last moments. It is coming. From red flag events and so many other things. That are happening right under our feet that we don't even know but we don't have much more time get as many people on that boat as possible these events that we've discussed just this morning eventually one is going to happen and it's going to set the world on fire pandora's box has not been opened yet but it's coming and when it does there's no stopping it that's why i'm telling you the rapture of the church is very very soon Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. If you're lost out there, call upon Jesus before it's too late. Time is just not on our side. To get as many people on that boat as possible. Many call us crazy. But destruction is coming. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube, letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep, those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.